Once upon a time, in a small village surrounded by endless hills and dense forests, there lived a boy named Aiden. He was known for being quiet, always keeping to himself. The other children in the village ran around in groups, playing games and laughing, but Aiden always preferred the solitude of the woods or the whisper of the wind on a hillside. Aiden wasn't lonely, though. At least, that's what he told himself. His best companions were the trees that towered above him, the birds that sang softly, and the streams that trickled through the valley. Each day, he would venture into the forest, exploring deeper than anyone else dared. He felt a deep connection to nature, one that made him feel at peace when he was alone. One day, as Aiden wandered farther than usual, he stumbled upon something he had never seen before, a small, hidden clearing. In the center was an ancient oak tree, its branches twisted and gnarled, with roots that looked like they had been growing for centuries. The tree was magnificent, but what caught Aiden's attention was the faint glow at its base. Curious, Aiden approached cautiously. As he got closer, he saw a small, glowing stone nestled between the roots. It pulsed with a gentle light, as if it was calling to him. Hesitant but drawn to it, Aiden reached out and touched the stone. In an instant, the world around him seemed to change. The forest became still, the air heavy, and the sky dimmed. Suddenly, a soft voice echoed in his mind. You have been chosen, Aiden, the voice said. This world is vast, and while you walk it alone now, your journey will soon change. Aiden looked around, but there was no one there. He felt a strange warmth in his heart, a feeling he had not known before. The voice continued, There is a power within you, something waiting to be awakened. But you must first face the greatest challenge of all, yourself. Confused and overwhelmed, Aiden stepped back from the tree. The glow of the stone faded, and the forest returned to normal. Everything seemed the same, yet Aiden knew something had shifted within him. The loneliness he had always carried with him felt different now, not as heavy. The silence of the woods didn't feel empty anymore, but full of possibilities. Over the next few days, Aiden felt a growing sense of purpose. He continued to visit the clearing, though the stone never glowed again. However, with each visit, he felt stronger, more connected to the world around him. He began to notice things he hadn't before, the way the animals moved, the subtle changes in the wind, and the way the earth seemed to hum beneath his feet. One afternoon, as Aiden sat by the ancient oak, he heard the distant sound of voices. They were faint, but familiar, the other children from the village. For the first time in a long while, Aiden felt the urge to join them. He realized that while he had been alone, he didn't have to be. The world was wide, and there were connections waiting to be made if he was open to them. With newfound courage, Aiden stood up and began walking back toward the village. He didn't know what the future held, but he felt ready to face it. Alone or not, his journey had just begun, 
and he knew that whatever challenges lay ahead, he was not truly by himself. The forest, the earth, and even the ancient oak would always be with him. And for the first time, Aidan smiled, not because he was alone, but because he had found his place in the world, whether he was with others or not. As Aidan walked back toward the village, he couldn't shake the feeling that something had truly awakened within him. The woods around him seemed more alive, as if they whispered secrets that he had never heard before. He felt the pulse of the earth under his feet, and the distant songs of birds resonated with a new depth. The world was no longer just a place he wandered alone, it had become part of him. When he reached the edge of the village, Aidan paused. The familiar sights of the homes and the sounds of the bustling villagers filled the air. He hadn't spoken to many of them in years. His quiet nature had always made him feel like an outsider, but now, standing there, he didn't feel the same fear of rejection. The warmth of the stone, the whispering voice, and the connection he felt to the forest had left him with a newfound sense of belonging. As he stepped into the village square, some of the children noticed him and whispered among themselves. One boy, Jace, who had always been the leader of the group, approached him. Where have you been, Aiden? You're always disappearing, Jace said, his tone a mix of curiosity and slight mockery. Aiden felt a flicker of unease, but instead of retreating like he used to, he smiled faintly. Just exploring. There's more out there than you think. The others gathered around, intrigued by Aiden's calm confidence. They had always seen him as the quiet boy, the one who stayed on the sidelines. But now, something was different. What do you mean? asked Lila, one of the younger girls in the group, her eyes wide with curiosity. Aiden thought about how to explain it. How could he tell them about the ancient oak, the glowing stone, and the voice that had spoken to him? They would think he was making it up. But the feeling inside him, the sense that he was connected to something larger, was real. So instead of trying to explain it, he said, there's a place in the woods, deep where the trees grow thick. If you're brave enough, you can feel the forest. It's alive, just like us. The children exchanged glances. Some of them scoffed, but Lila looked intrigued. Can you show us? she asked. Aiden hesitated. He had always gone into the forest alone, and part of him wanted to keep the clearing a secret, his special place. But then he remembered the voice, Your journey will change. Maybe this was what it meant. Maybe he was supposed to share the magic he had found. All right, he said, nodding. I'll show you. The next morning, Aiden led a small group of children into the forest. Jace, Lila, and a few others followed him, their excitement palpable. As they ventured deeper into the woods, the trees grew taller, their branches intertwining overhead like a vast canopy. The further they went, the quieter the village sounds became, until all they could hear was the rustling of leaves and the occasional call of a bird. 
Aiden felt the familiar pull of the clearing as they approached. He could sense the ancient oak before they even saw it, as if it was waiting for him. When they finally stepped into the clearing, the other children gasped in awe. The oak stood in the center, just as magnificent as Aiden remembered. Its roots twisted like ancient veins, and its bark seemed to shimmer faintly in the dappled sunlight. But to Aiden's surprise, the glowing stone was no longer hidden beneath the roots. It was sitting on a moss-covered rock, as if it had been waiting for their arrival. What is that? Jace asked, stepping forward. His usual bravado was gone, replaced with genuine wonder. Aiden didn't know how to explain it, so he simply said, It's a part of the forest. It's part of everything. As the children gathered around the stone, Aiden could feel the air grow thick with anticipation. The stone began to glow softly, its light casting an ethereal glow over the clearing. The children stood in silence, mesmerized by the strange energy that seemed to fill the space. Suddenly, the soft voice that had spoken to Aiden before echoed in his mind again. But this time, it wasn't just speaking to him, it was speaking to all of them. You are never alone, the voice whispered, its words carrying on the wind. The world is vast, and each of you is a part of it. Your paths are intertwined, like the roots of this ancient tree. Together, you will find the strength to face what lies ahead. The children looked around, their faces filled with wonder. Aiden knew that they had heard the voice too. He wasn't the only one anymore. Whatever had awakened within him had now reached them as well. As the glow of the stone faded, the children remained silent, each of them feeling the weight of what had just happened. They didn't need to speak. They all understood that something had changed. From that day forward, Aiden was no longer the boy who wandered the woods alone. He had found a group of friends who shared in his discovery, and together they would explore the mysteries of the forest and the hidden powers that lay within it. They returned to the clearing often, and though the stone never glowed as brightly again, the connection they felt to each other and to the world around them only grew stronger. And Aiden, once the boy who preferred solitude, had found a place not only in the forest, but in the hearts of those who had once seemed so far away. Over the weeks that followed, Aiden and the others ventured deeper into the forest, driven by the strange bond they had formed with the land and each other. Their secret visits to the clearing became a part of their daily lives, but with each passing day, Aiden could feel something stirring beneath the surface. The air felt charged, and the forest itself seemed to hum with a quiet, growing energy. One evening, as the group gathered by the ancient oak, the stone began to glow faintly again. This time, its light was more vibrant, pulsing rhythmically as if it were breathing. Jace, who had been skeptical at first, now gazed at the stone with fascination. It's getting stronger, he said softly, his voice barely above a whisper. What do you think it means? Aiden had been wondering the same thing. 
He had spent countless hours trying to understand the connection between the stone and the forest, but the answer eluded him. He turned to Lila, who had always been the most attuned to the forest's subtle rhythms. I don't know, Aiden admitted, but I think it's calling us for a reason. Just as Aiden spoke, the stone's light flared, brighter than they had ever seen it. The ground beneath their feet trembled, and the forest around them seemed to shift. Suddenly, the wind picked up, swirling through the clearing like a wild, invisible force. Leaves rustled violently, and the branches of the ancient oak creaked and groaned as if they were alive. The children huddled together, wide-eyed and frightened, as a voice, deeper and more powerful than before, echoed through the clearing. The time has come. The voice reverberated through the air, shaking the very earth beneath them. The children exchanged nervous glances, unsure of what to do. What time? Jace asked, his voice trembling despite his attempts to sound brave. Aiden stepped forward, feeling a strange sense of calm wash over him. Somehow, he knew this moment was important, perhaps the most important one of his life. The forest, the stone, the voice, it had all been leading up to this. The forest needs us, Aiden said, his voice steady. Something is coming. As if in response to Aiden's words, the trees around them began to shift. The ground beneath the ancient oak split open, revealing a dark, twisting tunnel that descended deep into the earth. The glowing stone floated above the tunnel, its light illuminating the hidden path below. Lila gasped. Is that? It's an entrance, Aiden said, his heart pounding to something we were meant to find. Without hesitation, Aiden stepped toward the tunnel. His friends hesitated, fear etched on their faces, but Lila followed closely behind him, her curiosity outweighing her fear. One by one, the others joined, their trust in Aiden pushing them forward. Together, they descended into the tunnel, the glowing stone guiding their way. The air grew cooler the deeper they went, and the walls of the tunnel seemed to pulse with the same energy that had filled the forest. Aiden could feel the forest's presence all around them, as if it was watching, waiting for them to uncover its secrets. After what felt like hours, they reached the end of the tunnel. It opened into a vast underground chamber, unlike anything they had ever seen. In the center of the chamber was a massive stone altar, and surrounding it were ancient carvings etched into the walls, depicting scenes of nature, storms, and creatures that looked both familiar and otherworldly. Aiden approached the altar cautiously. Atop it lay a large, crystalline shard, glowing with the same light as the stone they had found in the clearing. As he reached out to touch it, the voice spoke again, but this time it was softer, almost like a whisper. You are the keepers of this place. The guardians of balance. The forest has chosen you, and now the world beyond will depend on your strength. Aiden's fingers grazed the shard, and in that moment, a wave of energy surged through him. His vision blurred, 
and suddenly he saw flashes of distant lands, towering mountains, and dark, shadowy figures creeping through the wilderness. He saw storms brewing, oceans churning, and cities crumbling. He saw a world on the brink of chaos, and he knew that somehow he and his friends were connected to it. The vision faded as quickly as it had come, leaving Aiden breathless and overwhelmed. The others stared at him, sensing that something profound had just happened. What did you see? Lila asked, her voice barely a whisper. Aiden struggled to find the words. The world, it's changing. There's something dark out there, something that threatens everything. The forest brought us here to prepare us. We're not just protecting this place, we're protecting everything. The weight of his words hung in the air as the children looked around the chamber, realizing the gravity of the situation. They were no longer just a group of friends exploring the woods. They were now the guardians of something ancient, something powerful. And whatever was coming, they would face it together. With the shard in hand, Aiden felt the connection between himself and the forest solidify. He wasn't alone, not anymore. He had his friends, the forest, and the power they had been entrusted with. The journey ahead would be dangerous, and the darkness they would face would test them in ways they couldn't yet imagine. But Aiden knew, deep down, that they had been chosen for a reason. And they would rise to meet whatever came next. As Aiden and his friends emerged from the tunnel, they carried with them a newfound sense of purpose. The forest seemed to recognize their mission, its whispering leaves and rustling branches encouraging them onward. They returned to the village, the crystal shard safely hidden away in a pouch. They knew they couldn't reveal everything to the villagers, not yet, anyway. The days that followed were filled with quiet preparation. Aiden, Jace, Lila, and the others began training themselves, not just in physical endurance, but in understanding the forest's ways. They learned to listen to its subtler signs and interpret its warnings. Their bond grew stronger as they faced each challenge together, from learning the paths of hidden trails to deciphering the ancient carvings they had seen in the underground chamber. One night, as they gathered around a fire, Aiden spoke about the visions he had seen. The shard, it showed me that the balance of nature is shifting, he said. Something is disturbing it. I don't know exactly what, but I feel it's tied to the dark figures I saw. Jace, who had always been the most skeptical, nodded thoughtfully. You mean like a storm or a natural disaster? Aiden shook his head. It felt more like a force, something malevolent. We need to be ready for anything. The group agreed to take turns keeping watch over the forest, especially near the clearing and the entrance to the underground chamber. They hoped that by staying vigilant, they might detect any signs of the dark force that Aiden had seen. Weeks passed, and their vigilance paid off. One night, as Lila was on watch, she noticed something unusual, a dark mist creeping through the forest, moving against the usual flow of the wind. 
It seemed to swirl and gather, forming shadowy shapes that flickered in and out of sight. She quickly alerted the others. The group gathered at the clearing, their faces tense. The mist seemed to pulse with a dark energy, and the ancient oak's branches trembled as if in fear. Aiden, feeling the weight of their mission, approached the glowing stone, which had begun to shine with a bright, intense light. This is it, he said, his voice steady. Whatever is coming, it's here. The dark mist coalesced into a figure, tall, shadowy, and cloaked. Its presence exuded a palpable sense of dread. The figure's eyes glowed with a malevolent light, and its voice was a chilling whisper that seemed to echo from all directions. You have meddled in affairs beyond your understanding, the figure said. The balance has been disturbed. You cannot stop what is inevitable. Aiden stepped forward, holding the crystal shard high. We won't let you disrupt the balance. We've been chosen to protect this world. The figure's laughter was cold and mocking. Chosen? You are merely children, pretending to be heroes. The darkness I bring will consume all. As the figure advanced, the group prepared for what they feared might be a battle. But before they could act, the ancient oak's branches twisted and reached out, as if responding to the shard's light. The dark figure recoiled, momentarily disoriented. Seeing an opportunity, Aiden and his friends used their newfound knowledge of the forest to their advantage. They channeled the energy of the crystal shard, drawing on the strength and wisdom of the forest. The oak's roots began to move, forming a barrier between them and the dark figure. The figure, realizing the strength of their resolve, hesitated. You may have bought yourself time, but the darkness will return. This world will not be saved by your feeble efforts. With that, the dark figure dissipated into the mist, which gradually retreated into the shadows of the forest. The clearing fell silent, and the mist vanished, leaving only the flickering light of the glowing stone and the soft rustling of the trees. The group stood in stunned silence, their hearts racing. They had faced their first real test, and though they had driven the darkness away for now, they knew it was only a temporary reprieve. The dark force would not be easily vanquished. What do we do now? Lila asked, her voice trembling. Aiden looked at his friends, each of them showing signs of exhaustion but also determination. We continue to protect the forest and the world beyond it. We have the strength of the forest on our side, and as long as we stay united, we can face whatever comes. The group nodded in agreement. They had come together not just as friends, but as guardians of something far greater than themselves. Their bond with the forest and each other was their greatest strength and they were ready to face the challenges that lay ahead. As they made their way back to the village, the ancient oak stood silent, its branches now calm. The glowing stone had dimmed, but its light had left an imprint on their hearts. They knew that their journey was just beginning, and the balance they sought to protect was fragile and precious. Together, 
They faced the night with resolve, ready to stand as the forest's guardians against the encroaching darkness. They had chosen their path, and with each step, they grew stronger, more tuned to the world around them, and more prepared for the trials that awaited. And so, under the watchful eyes of the ancient oak and the ever-present spirit of the forest, Aiden and his friends embarked on a journey that would test their courage, their unity, and their resolve, knowing that the balance of the world depended on their bravery and their bond. The days after their encounter with the dark figure were quiet, too quiet. The forest seemed to hold its breath, waiting for something to happen. Aiden and his friends continued their patrols, always on edge, but the mist never returned. Still, the unease lingered, like a shadow following them. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon and the village grew quiet, Aiden sat alone by the ancient oak. His mind was heavy with thoughts of the dark figure's words, the darkness will return. He knew they had only faced the beginning of something much larger. As he sat there, lost in thought, he felt a familiar warmth, the shard. It pulsed faintly from his pouch, as if trying to communicate with him. Aiden took it out, and the moment his fingers touched the smooth surface, his vision blurred once again. This time, the images were sharper, clearer. He saw a great storm brewing over distant mountains, its dark clouds swirling with unnatural force. The shadowy figures from before moved through the land, creeping closer to the village. But there was something else. A flash of light, a powerful, radiant force hidden somewhere in the forest. It was something ancient, something that could tip the balance in their favor. Aiden gasped as the vision faded, his heart racing. He knew what he had to do. The next morning, he gathered his friends by the clearing. I had another vision, he told them, his voice serious. The darkness is moving closer. But there's something in the forest, something powerful. I don't know what it is but it's tied to the shard and the balance we're trying to protect. Lila, ever the voice of curiosity, looked at him with wide eyes. What do you think it is? I don't know, Aiden admitted, but we have to find it before the darkness does. Jace crossed his arms, looking skeptical but determined. Then let's go. If there's something out there that can help us, we need to find it. The group set out at dawn, venturing deeper into the forest than they had ever gone before. The trees grew taller, their branches thicker, casting strange shadows over the moss-covered ground. The forest was different here, older, wilder, as if they were entering a place that had been untouched for centuries. As they walked, the air grew heavy with anticipation. The shard in Aiden's pouch pulsed faintly, guiding them toward their destination. Hours passed, and just when they were beginning to think they had lost their way, they stumbled upon a hidden grove. The grove was unlike anything they had ever seen. In its center stood an enormous stone archway, covered in ancient runes that glowed faintly in the dappled sunlight. Vines twisted around its base, 
and at its heart a shimmering portal flickered, a gateway to somewhere unknown. What is this place? Jace whispered, his voice filled with awe. Aiden approached the archway cautiously, the shard glowing brighter with each step. I think this is what I saw in my vision, he said. It's a gateway to something powerful. But we have to be careful. I don't know where it leads. Lila stepped forward, her eyes locked on the portal. What if this is what the dark figure was talking about? What if it's something the darkness is after too? Aiden nodded. That's exactly why we need to go through. If there's something that can help us stop the darkness, it's on the other side. Without another word, Aiden held up the shard. The moment the glowing crystal touched the portal, the air around them crackled with energy. The runes on the archway flared to life, and the portal shimmered, growing larger and more defined. Are you sure about this? Jace asked, his voice tight with uncertainty. Aiden looked back at his friends. We've come this far together. We've faced the darkness before, and we'll face it again. Whatever is on the other side of this portal, it's part of our mission now. With a deep breath, Aiden stepped through the portal. The world on the other side was unlike anything they had imagined. They found themselves in a vast, sunlit valley, surrounded by towering mountains and lush, emerald green forests. The sky above was a deep, endless blue, and a river of light flowed through the valley, its waters shimmering with a strange, magical energy. But at the center of the valley stood something even more astonishing, a colossal, ancient tree, far larger than any they had seen before. Its branches stretched toward the heavens, and its roots seemed to pulse with life. The air around it thrummed with power, the same energy that resonated with the shard. This is it, Aiden whispered, staring up at the tree in awe. This is the source of the balance. As they approached the tree, they noticed that its bark was covered in the same runes they had seen on the archway. The tree seemed alive, not just with the life of a plant, but with something deeper, something ancient and wise. Suddenly, the voice returned, but this time it was different. It was no longer just a whisper in Aiden's mind. It was a chorus, a symphony of voices, each one soft but powerful. You have found the heart of the world, the voice said, resonating through the valley. It is here that the balance of all things is kept. The light and the dark, the forces of nature and time, they all converge here. You, the chosen guardians, have been brought here to protect it. Aiden and his friends stood in stunned silence, the weight of the words sinking in. This tree, this valley, it was the heart of everything. If the darkness reached it, the balance of the entire world would be shattered. But how do we protect it? Lila asked, her voice trembling. We're just kids. The voice responded gently. You are more than you know. The shard you carry is part of the heart's power. It is the key to defending this place. But it will not be easy. 
The darkness seeks to corrupt the heart, to twist it into something unnatural. You must be strong. You must be united. As the words faded, the valley began to change. Dark clouds gathered on the horizon, and a cold wind swept through the air. The shadows of the dark figures they had faced before flickered in the distance, growing closer. Aiden gripped the shard tightly, his heart racing. They're coming, he said, his voice steady despite the fear he felt. The darkness knows we're here. Jace stepped forward, his usual skepticism replaced by determination. Then we fight. Whatever happens, we protect this place. Lila and the others nodded, standing beside Aiden. The fear in their eyes was still there, but so was something else, courage. As the darkness crept closer, Aiden held the shard high. The tree responded, its branches glowing with the same light. The power of the heart surged through him and his friends, filling them with strength they hadn't known they possessed. The final battle for the balance had begun. And together, Aiden and his friends would face the coming storm, united as the guardians of the heart of the world, prepared to protect it with everything they had. The wind howled as the darkness closed in, swirling around the ancient tree like a hungry predator. Aiden and his friends stood their ground, their hearts pounding but their resolve unwavering. The shard in Aiden's hand pulsed with light, and the tree's branches glowed brighter, casting long, flickering shadows across the valley. From the gathering storm emerged the dark figures, tall, cloaked in shadow, their glowing eyes filled with malice. They moved with unnatural grace, gliding toward the heart of the world like phantoms. The air around them crackled with dark energy, and the ground trembled as if the earth itself feared their approach. They're here, Lila whispered, her voice barely audible over the wind. Jace clenched his fists, his jaw set in determination. We've faced them before. We can do it again. But Aiden knew this was different. The darkness was stronger now, more focused. It wasn't just a mist or a threat lurking in the shadows. It was a force, a physical presence, determined to destroy the balance. He could feel it pressing against him, like the weight of a storm about to break. Suddenly, the lead figure stepped forward, its eyes locked on Aiden. You think you can stop us? It hissed its voice cold and hollow. You are children, playing with powers you do not understand. The heart will fall, and the world will be ours. Aiden didn't flinch. We're not alone, he said, holding the shard higher. The light intensified, and the tree seemed to respond, its roots digging deeper into the earth, its branches stretching toward the sky. We have the forest. We have the heart. And we have each other. The figure laughed, a harsh, grating sound. The heart is already dying. The darkness will consume it, just as it will consume you. With a wave of its hand, the figure unleashed a torrent of dark energy, a swirling mass of shadows that raced toward them like a tidal wave. Aiden barely had time to react, 
but instinctively he thrust the shard forward. The light from the shard met the darkness head-on, creating a barrier of shimmering energy that rippled and crackled as the two forces clashed. The ground beneath them shook violently as the dark energy pushed against the barrier, but the shard held strong. Aiden could feel the power of the heart coursing through him, giving him the strength to hold the darkness at bay. Stay together, he shouted, his voice strained. The heart is with us. The others quickly form a circle around Aiden, their faces pale but determined. Lila reached out, placing her hand on Aiden's shoulder, and one by one, the others did the same. As they touched him, the light from the shard spread, surrounding them all in a protective glow. The connection between them grew stronger, and Aiden felt the heart's power intensify as if it were responding to their unity. The darkness surged again, more forcefully this time, but the light held firm. The figures recoiled, their hisses of anger filling the air. They had not expected such resistance. We need to push them back, Jace growled through gritted teeth. We can't just stand here and wait for them to overpower us. Aiden nodded, feeling the strain of holding the barrier. The tree, it's the key, he said, his voice breathless. If we can channel the heart's power through it, we might be able to drive them away. Lila's eyes widened. But how? We've never done anything like this before. I don't know, Aiden admitted. But we have to try. The shard, the tree, they're connected. We just have to trust that the heart will guide us. With no other choice, Aiden and his friends focused all their energy on the ancient tree. The shard in Aiden's hand flared, its light now pulsing in time with the glow of the tree's branches. The roots of the tree began to hum with power, and the ground around them trembled as the heart's energy built to a crescendo. The dark figures sensed the shift and surged forward again, their movements more frantic, more desperate. They hurled bolts of shadow at the tree, but each time, the light from the shard deflected them, sending the dark energy scattering harmlessly into the air. They're getting closer. Jace shouted, his voice filled with urgency. Aiden felt the weight of the moment pressing down on him. If they failed, the darkness would consume not just the heart, but everything. He closed his eyes, focusing all his strength, all his will, on the shard and the tree. Please, he thought, his mind reaching out to the heart. Show us the way. Help us protect the balance. And then, something shifted. A sudden surge of warmth flooded through him, filling him with a sense of clarity and purpose. The shard in his hand glowed brighter than ever before, and the tree responded in kind, its branches crackling with golden energy. Aiden opened his eyes, and for the first time, he understood. The power of the heart wasn't just in the shard or the tree, it was in them. The bond they shared, their unity, their courage, that was the true strength of the heart. Now, Aiden cried, his voice filled with new determination. Together, 
The group joined hands, and as they did, the light from the shards spread through each of them, connecting them in a radiant web of energy. The tree's branches stretched toward the sky, and with a thunderous crack, it unleashed a blinding wave of light that surged outward in every direction. The dark figures screamed in fury and pain as the light engulfed them, their shadowy forms disintegrating in the brilliance. The ground shook as the wave of energy swept across the valley, erasing the darkness and restoring balance to the world around them. When the light finally faded, the valley was quiet once more. The storm clouds had vanished, and the air was calm and still. The ancient tree stood tall and proud, its roots firmly planted in the earth, its branches shimmering with the golden glow of the heart's power. Aiden and his friends stood in silence, their hands still linked, their hearts pounding in their chests. They had done it. They had protected the heart. They had stopped the darkness. Lila was the first to speak, her voice soft with wonder. We did it. We really did it. Aiden nodded, a smile spreading across his face. We did. But this is only the beginning. Jace raised an eyebrow. The beginning? You mean there's more? Aiden looked up at the ancient tree, the shard still glowing faintly in his hand. The balance of the world is fragile. We've protected the heart today, but there will always be forces that try to disrupt it. We have to stay vigilant. We're the guardians now. This is our responsibility. The others nodded, their expressions filled with a mix of exhaustion and pride. They had faced the darkness and come out stronger for it. They had become something greater than they had ever imagined. As they turned to leave the valley, the ancient tree stood watch over them, its presence a reminder of the power they had discovered, and the bond that would carry them through whatever challenges lay ahead. Together, they walked back into the forest, the light of the heart guiding their way. They knew that their journey was far from over, but for the first time, they felt ready for whatever came next. And as long as they stood united, nothing could break the balance they had sworn to protect. As Aiden and his friends left the valley behind, the ancient tree's presence still lingered in their minds. The weight of their newfound role as guardians settled over them like a mantle, but it wasn't heavy with burden, it was filled with a quiet sense of purpose. Each of them had felt the power of the heart coursing through them, and though the darkness had been driven away for now, they knew the world was still full of dangers waiting to test them again. The forest around them seemed different as they made their way back to the village. The trees stood taller, their leaves glimmering in the morning light. The air was fresh, alive with the hum of nature's energy, as if the entire forest had awakened to their presence. The path they had walked before felt more familiar now, as if the forest itself recognized them as its protectors. But Aiden couldn't shake the feeling that this peace was temporary. As the village came into view, his mind was already racing with questions. Who was behind the dark figures? What was their goal? 
and most pressing of all, how long before the darkness returned? Do you think we'll ever understand everything that's going on? Lila asked as they walked, breaking the silence. She had been quiet since they'd left the valley, deep in thought. Aiden glanced at her, then at the others. Maybe not everything, but we've learned a lot more than we knew before. We know the heart of the world is real and that it's connected to the balance of everything, light, dark, life, and nature. And we know that someone or something is trying to corrupt that balance. Jace kicked a rock on the path, his expression thoughtful. But why? Why would anyone want to mess with the balance? What do they gain from it? Aiden shrugged, though the same question had been gnawing at him. Power, maybe. Control over nature. If the darkness can twist the heart, they could control everything, life, death, the seasons, even time. That's terrifying, Lila muttered. Jace frowned. So, we're just supposed to stop them every time they try? We're only kids, Aiden. We can't protect the whole world by ourselves. Aiden stopped walking and turned to face his friends. We won't be doing it alone. The forest is with us. The heart is with us. And besides, we're not just kids anymore. We've been through things no one else has, and we're stronger for it. We may not have all the answers, but we've been chosen for a reason. There was a quiet confidence in his voice that seemed to settle the group's unease. Lila and Jace exchanged glances, and then Lila nodded. You're right. We're not just stumbling through this anymore. We know what's at stake, and we know how to fight. The village came into view over the hill, its familiar rooftops bathed in the warm glow of the morning sun. But as they approached, they noticed something strange, a figure standing at the edge of the village, watching them. It was a woman, cloaked in deep green, with hair that shimmered like the leaves of an oak tree. She had an ageless quality, her eyes wise and knowing. Aiden slowed his pace, narrowing his eyes. Who's that? The woman stepped forward, her gaze fixed on Aiden and the group. As she drew closer, the air around her seemed to shimmer with an aura of ancient magic, like the very essence of the forest was walking with her. You have done well, she said, her voice soft but commanding, like the rustling of leaves in the wind. The heart is safe, for now. Who are you? Lila asked, her curiosity getting the better of her. How do you know about the heart? The woman smiled gently, her eyes filled with warmth. I am Althea, the guardian of the forest. I have watched over these woods for many centuries, protecting the balance between the light and the dark. But the balance is shifting, as you have already seen. Aiden took a cautious step forward, the shard in his pocket pulsing faintly as if it recognized Althea's presence. You're a guardian? Like us? Althea nodded. Yes, though my role has been to keep watch from the shadows, guiding those who are destined to protect the heart. 
That destiny has now passed to you. The heart chose you and your friends, and you have proven yourselves worthy. Jace raised an eyebrow. So, what now? Do we just keep fighting the darkness every time it shows up? Althea's expression grew serious. The darkness you fought is only a fraction of what lies beyond. The true force behind it is still gathering strength, and it will return stronger and more dangerous than before. That is why you must prepare. You will need to learn more about the ancient powers at work, both the light and the dark. Aiden felt a weight settle on his shoulders. How do we do that? We don't know where to start. Althea's gaze softened. I will help you. There are places in the forest, ancient sanctuaries, where the knowledge of the old world still resides. You must seek them out. Learn from the past to protect the future. There are others, too, who will aid you. Not all who dwell in shadow are your enemies. Jace folded his arms, still looking skeptical. So, what, we're going on some kind of quest? Althea smiled faintly. In a way, yes. But this journey is as much about understanding yourselves as it is about defeating the darkness. The heart of the world is powerful, but it draws its strength from those who protect it. Your bond with each other will be your greatest weapon. Aiden nodded slowly, understanding the weight of her words. The battle ahead wasn't just about facing physical enemies, it was about learning to trust each other, to harness their collective strength. They were more than just friends now. They were a team, bound by a shared destiny. Where do we start? Lila asked, her voice filled with determination. Althea turned her gaze to the forest. There is an ancient grove hidden deep within the woods where the first guardians once trained. The knowledge you seek is there. But beware, the path is treacherous and the darkness will try to stop you. Aiden looked at his friends, seeing the same resolve in their eyes that he felt in his heart. We're ready, he said. Althea nodded approvingly. Then go, and remember, you are never alone. The heart is with you, as am I. With a final, knowing smile, Althea faded into the forest, her presence blending with the trees until she was gone. Aiden turned to his friends, the path ahead of them clear in his mind. They had faced the darkness once and survived. Now they were being called to something greater. Together, they would journey to the ancient grove, to learn the secrets of the past and prepare for the battles yet to come. And whatever awaited them, they would face it united as guardians of the heart of the world. The forest had grown denser as Aiden and his friends ventured deeper into its heart, following the path Althea had described. The air here was thicker, filled with the scent of earth and old leaves, and the sounds of the village had long since faded away. Every step they took felt like entering a new world, one where the trees stood taller and closer together, their ancient trunks gnarled with age and wisdom. Sunlight filtered through the canopy, casting dappled patterns on the forest floor. 
Are we getting close? Jace asked, his voice quieter than usual, as if the forest itself demanded respect. Aiden checked the shard in his hand, which pulsed faintly, as though attuned to the path. I think so. The shard's leading us, but it feels different here. Almost like the forest is watching us. Lila, who had been quiet for most of the journey, glanced around nervously. I've never seen trees like these before. They're ancient, like they've been here longer than anything we know. They have, Aiden replied softly. This is the old part of the forest, where the first guardians train. Althea said it holds the knowledge we need to face the darkness. We just have to find the grove. The group pressed on, the forest growing more mysterious with every step. Strange symbols, etched into tree trunks and stones, seemed to glow faintly as they passed. Lila knelt by one of the symbols, her fingers tracing its shape. These look like the same runes we saw on the portal, she said, her voice filled with awe. Aiden crouched beside her. Yeah. I think they're part of the forest's magic. They're ancient, but they still hold power. Maybe they'll lead us to the grove. Suddenly, the shard in Aiden's hand flared with light, brighter than before. He stood quickly, his heart racing as the air around them shifted, charged with a new energy. The trees seemed to bend and twist, their branches creaking as though they were alive, watching the group. Did you see that? Jace muttered, gripping his staff tightly. The forest just moved. Before Aiden could respond, the ground beneath their feet trembled. A low, Rumbling sound echoed through the trees, and the path ahead of them split open, revealing a narrow ravine. On the other side, bathed in golden light, was a clearing unlike any they had seen before. In the center of the clearing stood a stone circle, its surface covered in glowing runes. That has to be it, Lila said her voice barely above a whisper. Aiden nodded, staring at the clearing across the ravine. The grove. It has to be. But as they moved closer to the edge of the ravine, something stirred in the shadows. From the darkness beneath the trees emerged tall, twisted shapes, creatures made of bark and shadow, their eyes glowing with a dim, unnatural light. They moved silently, their forms shifting between solid and ethereal, as though they were made from the very essence of the forest itself. Lila gasped, stepping back. What are those things? They're guardians of the grove, Aiden said, his voice steady but tense. Protectors, just like Althea said. But they don't recognize us as allies yet. Jace raised his staff, his eyes narrowing. Looks like we'll have to convince them. The creatures stepped forward, their forms towering over the group, their glowing eyes locked onto the shard in Aiden's hand. One of them let out a low, guttural growl, and the others followed, their movements slow and deliberate, like predators stalking their prey. We don't want to fight you. Aiden called out, his voice echoing through the trees. We're guardians, 
like you. We're here to protect the heart. The creatures hesitated, their movements slowing, but they didn't stop. The closest one stepped forward, its massive limbs creaking as it loomed over Aiden. He could feel the coldness radiating from it, like the deep, ancient chill of the forest at night. Aiden's heart pounded in his chest. He knew they couldn't fight these creatures, not without risking everything. The shard in his hand pulsed, and he could feel the energy of the heart flowing through him, connecting him to the forest, to the creatures before him. He closed his eyes and focused, trying to reach out with his mind, just as he had in the valley. Please, he thought, his voice echoing in the stillness of his mind. We are here to protect the balance. We mean no harm. For a moment, nothing happened. The creatures continued their slow advance, their eyes glowing brighter, their forms shifting more rapidly between solid and shadow. But then, just as Aiden thought they would have to fight, the shard in his hand flared with a brilliant light. The energy of the heart surged through him, radiating outward like a beacon. The creatures froze in place, their eyes fixed on the shard, and the forest seemed to hold its breath. One of the creatures, the largest of them all, stepped forward and knelt before Aiden, its massive form lowering to the ground in a gesture of submission. The others followed suit, their glowing eyes dimming as they bowed before the group. Aiden let out a breath he hadn't realized he'd been holding. They recognize us, he said quietly. They know we're here to help. Jace exhaled in relief, lowering his staff. Well, that's one way to make an entrance. Lila grinned, though her eyes were still wide with wonder. I can't believe that worked. How did you do that? I don't know, Aiden admitted, his voice soft. It's like the shard knows them, like it's part of the forest, too. The heart connects everything. The largest creature stood slowly, its glowing eyes now soft and welcoming. It gestured toward the stone circle in the clearing beyond the ravine, its voice a deep, rumbling sound that Aiden couldn't quite understand, but somehow the meaning was clear. The grove is ready, Aiden said, turning to his friends. We can cross. The ravine, once a deep chasm, had shifted as well. The earth beneath their feet moved and reshaped, forming a natural bridge of roots and stone. With the guardians watching over them, the group crossed the bridge and entered the grove. The air inside the grove was different, heavy with magic, filled with the hum of ancient power. The stone circle in the center pulsed with light, its runes glowing in time with the shard in Aiden's hand. This was the place Althea had spoken of, the place where the first guardians had trained. As they stepped into the circle, Aiden felt the power of the grove wash over him, filling him with a deep sense of connection to the forest, to the heart, and to his friends. The runes beneath their feet flared with light, and for a moment, the world around them seemed to fade away, replaced by a vision of the past. They saw the first guardians, men and women standing in the same circle, 
wielding the same power that now flowed through Aiden and his friends. They were warriors, healers, and protectors, united by their duty to maintain the balance of the world. They had faced the darkness before, just as Aiden and his friends were about to face it again. The vision faded, and Aiden felt a deep sense of purpose settle over him. The journey ahead would be dangerous, but they were ready. We're not alone in this, he said, looking at his friends. The guardians before us, they faced the same darkness, and they fought it. We can do the same. Lila smiled, her eyes filled with determination. Then let's make sure we're ready. The grove hummed with power as they began their training, preparing for the battles that lay ahead. The ancient knowledge of the first guardians flowed into them, teaching them how to harness the energy of the heart, how to defend the balance, and how to stand united against the coming darkness. And though the path ahead was uncertain, Aiden knew one thing for sure, they would face it together. Weeks passed, and the grove had become their sanctuary. The ancient runes etched into the stones around them glowed with a familiar light each day as Aiden, Lila, and Jace trained. The knowledge of the first guardians was vast, and though the learning was intense, it brought them closer to each other and to the power they now wielded. The grove itself seemed to respond to their growth. Where once the clearing had been still and silent, now it thrummed with life. The wind whispered through the trees, carrying with it the memories of those who had trained before them. The guardians of the forest, the creatures who had once stood against them, now watched from the shadows, offering their quiet support. Aiden had learned how to channel the energy of the heart more effectively, his connection deepening with each passing day. It was as though the forest itself was flowing through his veins. Lila, ever the quick learner, had discovered how to manipulate the ancient runes to form protective barriers, calling on the symbols to shield them in moments of need. Jace, with his keen sense of strategy, had developed his own fighting style, blending the magic of the forest with his natural agility and strength. One evening, after an especially grueling session, they sat around the stone circle, catching their breath. The sun was setting, casting a warm, golden light over the grove. The day had been productive, but Aiden could sense that something weighed heavily on Lila's mind. She stared at the ground, tracing patterns in the dirt with a stick. Do you think we're ready? she asked quietly. Aiden glanced at Jace, who shrugged, then back at Lila. Ready for what? For what's coming? Lila said, her voice serious. Althea said the darkness would return stronger than before. We've trained, but what if it's not enough? What if we can't stop it this time? Jace tossed a pebble into the center of the circle, watching it bounce across the stone. We've done all we can. We just have to trust that we're prepared. Besides, we've already faced the darkness once and survived. We'll do it again. Aiden considered their words. He had the same doubts, the same questions. 
But every time they trained, every time he connected with the heart, he felt that they were meant for this. The forest had chosen them for a reason. We've come a long way, Aiden said. We weren't ready before, but now? We've learned things that no one else knows. We have the heart on our side. And we have each other. Lila looked up, her eyes softening. I know. It's just. I can't help but wonder what happens if we fail. Aiden stood up and placed a hand on her shoulder. Then we fight harder. We can't control everything, but we can control how we face it. And we'll face it together. Just as the words left his mouth, the shard in his pocket pulsed, stronger than before. Aiden's hand instinctively went to it, and a cold shiver ran down his spine. Did you feel that? he asked, his voice suddenly tense. Lila and Jace both looked at him, their eyes widening as they felt it too. The air around them had shifted, the light dimming as if the very sun had been blotted out. The grove, which had been so full of life and warmth moments before, now felt heavy and ominous. From the shadows of the trees, the forest guardians stirred, their movements frantic. Their glowing eyes flickered, their forms shifting restlessly as though sensing something was terribly wrong. Aiden, Lila whispered, her voice barely audible. What's happening? Aiden gripped the shard tightly, feeling the pulse quicken in his hand. The ground beneath them trembled, and a low, guttural sound echoed through the forest, a sound Aiden recognized all too well. The darkness was returning. We need to get out of here, Jace said, standing quickly. Now! Before they could react, a figure emerged from the trees, cloaked in shadows. Its form was twisted and monstrous, with eyes that glowed a sickly green. It was unlike anything they had seen before, larger and more fearsome than the dark figures they had faced in the valley. Lila stood, her voice steady despite the fear in her eyes. It's here. The creature stepped forward, its presence warping the very air around it. The runes in the stone circle flared with light, reacting to the intruder, but the creature seemed unfazed. It let out a low, rumbling growl, and the ground beneath them cracked. Aiden's heart raced. This was no ordinary enemy. This was something more powerful, more dangerous than anything they had ever faced. But they had trained for this. Lila, get the barrier up. Aiden shouted, already moving into position. He could feel the energy of the heart surging through him, the shard glowing brightly in his hand. Lila nodded, her hands moving quickly as she summoned the runes into the air. The ancient symbols glowed around them, forming a protective dome of light just as the creature lunged forward. The barrier held, but only barely. The creature slammed against it with a force that sent cracks spidering through the glowing runes. Lila gritted her teeth, her hands trembling as she struggled to maintain the spell. We can't hold it forever, she cried. Then we don't. Aiden shouted back. 
He turned to Jace. We need to push it back. Use everything you've got. Jace nodded, his staff already glowing with the energy of the forest. He swung it forward, sending a blast of light toward the creature. It hit the beast square in the chest, forcing it to stagger back, but it recovered quickly, its eyes glowing brighter with rage. Aiden felt the shard pulse again, stronger this time, as if responding to the threat. He knew what he had to do. Drawing on the power of the heart, he raised the shard above his head, letting its energy flow through him. The creature let out a roar and charged again, slamming into the barrier with such force that it shattered the runes, sending a shockwave through the grove. But Aiden was ready. With a cry, he unleashed the full power of the shard. A beam of light shot from his hand, hitting the creature head-on. The force of it sent the beast flying backward, its monstrous form disintegrating into shadow and ash. For a moment, everything was still. The grove, once filled with the sound of battle, was now eerily quiet. Aiden lowered his hand, breathing heavily, his heart pounding in his chest. Lila collapsed to her knees, exhausted from maintaining the barrier, and Jace stood frozen, his eyes wide with shock. Is it over? Jace asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Aiden looked at the spot where the creature had been, the last remnants of its form fading into the air. For now. But even as he said it, he knew this was just the beginning. The darkness had returned, and this time, it wouldn't stop until it had consumed everything. Aiden looked at his friends, his resolve hardening. They had trained, they had fought, and they had survived. But the real battle was still ahead of them. And this time, there would be no turning back. We need to find Althea, Aiden said, his voice firm. She'll know what to do. Jason and Lila nodded, their fear replaced with determination. They had come too far to give up now. Together, they left the grove, the ancient magic still pulsing beneath their feet, guiding them toward the next chapter of their journey. The darkness was growing, but so was their strength. And as long as they stood together, they would face whatever came next. The night fell swiftly as Aiden, Lila, and Jace made their way back through the forest. The once familiar path now seemed more foreboding, as if the trees themselves were keeping secrets. The encounter with the monstrous creature had shaken them, but it also steeled their resolve. They had no choice but to find Althea, the ancient guardian who had guided them before. They moved in silence, their senses heightened, every rustle of the leaves or crack of a branch setting their nerves on edge. Aiden led the way, the shard in his hand glowing faintly as it guided them. Despite the tension, there was a sense of purpose in the air, an understanding that they were on the verge of something much bigger than any of them could have imagined. Finally, after what felt like hours, they emerged from the dense woods and found themselves standing before the familiar clearing where Althea's small, moss-covered cottage sat. 
The soft light spilling from its windows was a welcome sight, but the air around the cottage felt different, heavier. Do you think she knows we're coming? Lila asked, her voice barely audible. Aiden nodded. If the darkness has returned, she'll know. She's always known. As they approached the door, it creaked open on its own, revealing Althea standing in the doorway, her expression grim. Her long silver hair shimmered in the faint light, and her deep green eyes seemed to pierce through them. You felt it too, she said, her voice low and serious. The darkness stirs once more. Aiden stepped forward, the shard glowing brighter in his hand. We faced one of them. It was stronger, more dangerous than anything we've encountered before. But we stopped it. Althea's eyes flicked to the shard, and she sighed, stepping aside to let them enter. You may have stopped one, but the darkness is vast. What you faced was but a fraction of its true power. The cottage was just as they remembered it, cozy, with shelves lined with ancient books, dried herbs hanging from the ceiling, and a fire crackling in the hearth. But the warmth that usually filled the space seemed dimmed by the weight of the news they brought. Althea motioned for them to sit around the table, and she joined them, her eyes scanning each of their faces. I had hoped, she began, her voice tinged with sadness, that by awakening the heart within you, we could delay the darkness return. But its resurgence was inevitable. The balance has been tipping for far longer than we realized. What do we do now? Jace asked, his voice tight with frustration. We've trained, we've faced these creatures, but if what we saw was only a fraction, how can we fight something so overwhelming? Althea leaned back in her chair, her fingers lightly tapping the table's surface as she considered her words. The heart of the forest is powerful, yes, but it was never meant to stand alone against the darkness. There are other sources of power, other hearts, scattered across the world, each one connected to the balance in its own way. Lila's eyes widened. Other hearts? But why didn't you tell us this before? Because, Althea said softly, you were not ready to hear it. The heart you guard is the first the oldest, and the most powerful. But it is only one piece of a much larger puzzle. The darkness is not just a force of nature. It is intelligent, and it seeks to corrupt or consume all the hearts. If it succeeds, the balance will be destroyed, and the world will fall into shadow. Aiden clenched his fists, the shard warm in his hand. So, we have to find the other hearts before the darkness does? Althea nodded. Yes. Each heart is hidden, protected by guardians like you. But the darkness will not rest until it has found them all. You must seek them out. Unite their power with your own, and awaken the full strength of the guardians. The gravity of her words settled over them like a heavy fog. This was bigger than anything they had imagined. It wasn't just about their village or even the forest, it was about the entire world. And they were the ones chosen to stop it. 
But how do we find the other hearts? Lila asked, her voice barely concealing her anxiety. Althea stood and moved to one of the shelves, pulling down a small, worn leather-bound book. She opened it, revealing pages filled with ancient symbols and maps. This is a record of the locations of the other hearts, at least the ones we know of. But be warned, the darkness will not make this easy. The journey ahead of you will be long, and it will test everything you've learned. Aiden glanced at Lila and Jace, who both nodded, determination replacing the fear in their eyes. They had come too far to turn back now. We'll find them, Aiden said, his voice steady. We'll stop the darkness. Althea smiled sadly, but there was hope in her eyes. I believe you will. But you won't be able to do it alone. The guardians of each heart must unite. You'll need allies, others who can wield the same power as you. Seek them out, and when the time comes, the hearts will guide you. Jace frowned. More guardians? But how do we find them? The hearts are connected, Althea explained. Once you awaken the next one, it will call out to those who are destined to protect it. You won't have to find them. They will find you. Aiden stood, feeling the weight of the task ahead settle on his shoulders. This wasn't just about him, or even about his friends. This was about the world, about every life that would be affected if they failed. We leave at dawn, he said, turning to Lila and Jace. We'll follow the map, find the other hearts, and gather as many guardians as we can. Whatever it takes, we'll stop the darkness. Althea stepped forward, placing a hand on Aiden's shoulder. Remember, Aiden, you are not alone in this. The forest, the heart, and all those who have come before you are with you. Trust in the bond you share with the land, and it will guide you. As they left Althea's cottage, the night sky stretched out above them, filled with stars. The weight of their mission hung in the air, but there was also a quiet sense of hope. They had faced the darkness before and survived. Now, they would face it again, stronger, wiser, and more united than ever. Aiden glanced at the shard in his hand, its light flickering softly in the night. The journey ahead would be difficult, but he knew in his heart that they were ready. Together, they would seek the other hearts, find the other guardians, and stand against the darkness. And this time, they wouldn't stop until the balance was restored. As dawn broke, casting golden rays through the thick canopy, Aiden, Lila, and Jace prepared for the journey ahead. The map Althea had given them was ancient, its ink faded in places, but its message was clear. There were four other hearts scattered across the land, hidden in places where the power of the earth and sky converged. Each heart was a key to the world's balance, and each was in danger. Aiden packed the map into his satchel, feeling the weight of the task ahead. He glanced at his friends. Jace was sharpening his staff, his expression focused and determined. 
Lila was standing by the edge of the clearing, her eyes scanning the horizon as if mentally preparing for the unknown challenges they would face. You ready? Aiden asked, walking up beside her. Lila nodded, though her lips pressed into a thin line. Ready as I'll ever be. It just feels like everything we've been through was the beginning. Now it's real. It is, Aiden replied. But we're not the same kids we were when this all started. We've trained. We've faced the darkness. We can do this. Jace joined them, twirling his staff with a flourish. Well, whatever's waiting for us out there, it's not going to like what we've got in store. Let's get moving before we lose daylight. With that, they set off, leaving behind the safety of the grove and Althea's cottage. The forest felt different as they walked deeper into its heart, as if the trees themselves were aware of the looming threat. The shard in Aiden's pocket pulsed softly, guiding them, but the path ahead was long and full of uncertainties. The first heart, according to the map, was located in the mountains to the north. It was a remote and dangerous place, but its seclusion had protected it from the eyes of the darkness for centuries. The journey there would take days, possibly weeks, but there was no other choice. If they could awaken the heart, they would find the next step in their journey and hopefully more allies. As they traveled, the tension in the air thickened. The deeper they went into the wilderness, the more signs of the darkness they began to see. Shadows seemed to stretch unnaturally long, and the animals they encountered were skittish, as though they could sense an approaching storm. There was an unease that none of them could shake. On the third night of their journey, as they set up camp by a small stream, Lila voiced what they had all been thinking. Do you think the darkness knows where we're going? She asked, staring into the crackling flames of their campfire. Aiden looked up from his map, frowning. It's possible. We've felt its presence before, and if it's as powerful as Althea says, it might already know we're trying to find the other hearts. Jace poked the fire with a stick, sending sparks into the air. If that's true, it's not going to let us get to the hearts without a fight. We'll need to stay sharp. Aiden nodded his mind racing with possibilities. If the darkness was aware of their movements, then every step they took could be leading them closer to danger. But there was no turning back. The first heart awaited them, and with it, the hope of tipping the balance back in their favor. As they prepared to sleep, Aiden held the shard in his hand, its light dim yet steady. The shard's connection to the heart of the forest was undeniable, and he could feel its power pulsing in time with his heartbeat. It gave him strength, reminding him that they weren't alone in this fight. But as he drifted into an uneasy sleep, visions began to fill his mind, visions of the mountains ahead, cloaked in shadow, and of a great darkness rising from beneath the earth. He saw glimpses of strange figures standing guard over the heart, their faces obscured, their forms twisted and indistinct. And then, in the distance, he saw a figure, tall, cloaked in black, 
its eyes burning with an eerie green fire. A voice echoed in his mind, low and menacing, you cannot stop what has already begun. Aiden jolted awake, his heart pounding in his chest. The fire had died down to embers, and his friends were still asleep, their breathing steady in the cool night air. But the dream, no, the warning, lingered in his mind. He stood up, stepping away from the campfire, and gazed out into the darkness of the forest. There was something out there, watching, waiting for them. He could feel its presence, like a shadow on the edge of his consciousness. Whatever it was, it knew they were coming, and it was preparing for their arrival. The next morning, they set out again, moving swiftly toward the mountains. The terrain became steeper, the trees thinning as they climbed higher into the rocky hills. The air grew colder, and the skies darkened, as though even the sun was wary of what lay ahead. By the fourth day, they had reached the foothills of the mountains. The towering peaks loomed above them, their jagged silhouettes cutting into the sky like the teeth of some ancient beast. The shard in Aiden's pocket pulsed more intensely now, guiding them up a narrow path that wound its way into the mountains. As they climbed, the wind howled around them, and the temperature dropped. The path grew narrower, and the sheer cliffs on either side made the ascent treacherous. But Aiden could feel they were getting closer. The shard's pulsing quickened, almost as if it was calling out to the heart. We must be near, Lila said, her breath visible in the cold air. Aiden nodded, gripping the shard tighter. We're close. I can feel it. They rounded a corner, and suddenly the path opened up into a wide, flat plateau. At the center stood an ancient stone altar, covered in moss and worn by time. Surrounding it were towering pillars, each one etched with runes similar to those they had seen in the forest. But there was something wrong. The air here was thick, oppressive. A dark mist clung to the ground, swirling around the altar like smoke. And standing before the altar was a figure, a tall, cloaked figure with glowing green eyes. The same figure Aiden had seen in his vision. So, you've come the figure said, its voice cold and echoing. Just as I knew you would. Aiden stepped forward, his heart racing. Who are you? The figure's eyes glowed brighter. I am the harbinger of the darkness. The heart you seek will not be yours. It belongs to the shadow now. Lila and Jace moved to stand beside Aiden, their weapons ready, but Aiden could feel the power radiating from the figure. It was overwhelming, far beyond anything they had faced before. The hearts are ours to protect, Aiden said, his voice steady despite the fear creeping into his chest. We won't let the darkness take them. The harbinger laughed, a deep, sinister sound. You are too late. The heart is already corrupted. And soon, the others will follow. Aiden glanced at the altar, his eyes narrowing. The shard in his hand pulsed violently, reacting to the presence of the heart. But there was something wrong. 
Its light was dim, flickering as if struggling to remain alive. Prepare yourselves, the harbinger said, raising its hands. For this is where your journey ends. Before they could react, the ground beneath them trembled, and dark tendrils of shadow shot up from the earth, twisting and writhing as they reached for them. Aiden raised the shard, calling on the power of the heart, but the darkness was fast, faster than anything he had ever faced. Aiden's heart pounded as the dark tendrils surged toward them, moving with a speed and malevolence that made his breath catch in his throat. Instinctively, he raised the shard, willing its light to flare brighter. But the flickering, fragile glow was barely enough to hold back the encroaching darkness. The tendrils twisted and coiled, inching ever closer. Lila! Jace! Aiden shouted, his voice tinged with urgency. Without hesitation, Lila raised her hands, summoning the power of the wind. With a sweeping gesture, she sent a gust of air rushing toward the tendrils, trying to push them back. Jace followed suit, his staff glowing faintly as he called upon the earth beneath them, causing the ground to tremble and crack in an attempt to break the tendrils' grip. But the shadows seemed impervious to their efforts. The darkness moved with a mind of its own, reforming and surging again, more relentless than before. The harbinger stood motionless, watching them with those eerie green eyes, as though it found their struggle amusing. Aiden felt a cold sweat trickle down his back. The shard was their only hope, but its power was weak, corrupted, just like the heart they had come to save. He could feel the heart's presence now, buried deep beneath the altar, its once pure energy tainted by the darkness that had claimed it. We can't hold them off like this. Lila shouted, her voice straining as she fought to keep the wind barrier up. Aiden gritted his teeth, racking his brain for a solution. The heart was their key, but they needed to purify it, restore its connection to the light. But how could they reach it when the darkness had already taken hold? Then it hit him. The shard was a piece of the heart they had already saved, the heart of the forest. Its power was weak, but it was still connected to the ancient forces of nature. If he could somehow use that connection, he might be able to reach the heart beneath the altar, even through the corruption. He took a deep breath, gripping the shard tighter. Lila, Jace, I need you to buy me some time. I think I can reach the heart, but I need to focus. Lila shot him a determined look, nodding sharply. We've got your back. Jace slammed his staff into the ground, summoning a wall of stone between them and the advancing shadows. Do what you have to, Aiden. We'll hold them off. Aiden closed his eyes, blocking out the sounds of the battle around him. He could hear the wind roaring, the earth groaning, and the tendrils hissing as they struck against Lila and Jace's defenses, but he forced himself to focus on the shard in his hand. Slowly, he let his mind sink into the shard's energy, feeling the pulse of the heart of the forest. It was faint, like a distant drumbeat, but it was there, steady and unwavering. 
He focused on that rhythm, letting it guide him deeper, until he could almost feel the ancient roots of the forest stretching beneath the earth, connecting to the heart under the altar. The darkness was strong, but there was still a thread of light within the heart. It flickered weakly, like a flame about to be snuffed out, but it was there. Aiden. The voice was faint, but it echoed in his mind like a whisper through the trees. The light has not yet gone out. Aiden's eyes snapped open, his pulse quickening. The heart was still alive, it hadn't been fully consumed. There was still a chance. He concentrated harder, sending the shard's energy down through the ground, like a root searching for water. He could feel the connection growing stronger, the shard linking with the heart beneath the altar, feeding it what little light remained. But the darkness fought back, surging up from the depths of the earth like a tidal wave. It pushed against the light, trying to snuff it out entirely. Aiden's body trembled under the strain, his teeth gritted in concentration. He could feel the darkness pushing against his mind, whispering doubts, fears, and despair. The harbinger's voice echoed through his thoughts, cold and mocking. You are too late. The heart is mine now. You cannot win. But Aiden refused to give in. He focused on the light, on the faint pulse of the heart. He thought of the forest, of the life and energy that thrived there. He thought of Althea's words, of the balance they were fighting to protect. And most of all, he thought of his friends, standing by his side, fighting for the same cause. The shard in his hand began to glow brighter, its light pushing back against the darkness. Slowly, steadily, the energy flowed from the shard into the heart, purifying it piece by piece. But just as the light began to gain ground, the harbinger moved. With a sweep of its cloak, the figure stepped forward, raising its hands. Dark energy swirled around it, and with a sudden motion, it sent a blast of shadow straight toward Aiden. Aiden, look out! Jace shouted, but it was too late. The shadow struck Aiden like a hammer, knocking him off his feet and sending him crashing to the ground. The shard flew from his hand, landing several feet away, its glow dimming instantly. Pain shot through Aiden's body as he struggled to get up, but the impact had left him disoriented. The connection to the heart was severed, and the darkness surged forward again, stronger than before. The harbinger advanced, its green eyes gleaming with triumph. Foolish child, you cannot fight the inevitable. The darkness will consume all, and you will watch as everything you love falls to shadow. Aiden's vision blurred as he tried to crawl toward the shard, but the darkness was closing in. The tendrils were almost upon him, their cold, suffocating presence filling the air. And then, just as the shadows were about to engulf him, a blinding flash of light exploded from the shard. Aiden blinked in shock as the light surged across the plateau, driving back the tendrils and halting the harbinger in its tracks. For a moment, the darkness recoiled, hissing in fury. From the light, a voice echoed, soft, 
gentle, but filled with a quiet power. The heart of the forest will not abandon its guardian. A figure appeared in the light, a glowing, ethereal form, shaped like a woman, her hair flowing like the branches of a great tree. Her eyes shimmered with the green light of the forest, and her presence filled Aiden with a sense of peace and strength. It was Althea, or at least, a projection of her spirit. Aiden felt her warmth, her energy, filling him with renewed strength. The light flowed back into the shard, 